All right, everybody, welcome back for another deep dive. This time we're looking at something that's uh, pretty much unavoidable these days. Yeah. Social media and how it impacts you know, our mental health, which yeah. is something we all care about a lot. Absolutely. We've got a really interesting episode of Fine English for anyone to guide us through this one. And um, I'll tell you, they don't sugarcoat anything. No, they don't. They go right into the nitty gritty, which is kind of refreshing, you know? I think so. Like, let's just rip the Band-Aid off and really talk about yeah. this. So we're going to unpack all that today. Yeah. How social media sometimes, you know, might be doing more harm than good, but also what we can do about it. Mm -hmm. How we can use these platforms in a way that benefits our mental health. Absolutely. So to jump right in, like I said, this episode really starts out strong. Yeah. They list five major issues right off the bat. They hit you hard. Comparison and self-esteem, cyberbullying, FOMO. Fear of missing out. Fear of missing out. Sleep disruption. And finally, addiction and time management. Just hearing those is like, oh, okay, that's a lot. <laughs> right. <laughs> I think what's really cool about this episode is they go beyond just listing the problems. Mm -hmm. They dig into why. Yeah. Like how these things are actually impacting our brains and our mental well-being. Like the science behind it. Yeah. And I think that's where the value really lies. For you, the listener, you mm -hmm. know, because we can kind of say, oh, yeah, scrolling makes me feel bad. Mm. But when you really understand the mechanisms behind it, it clicks in a different way. Right. So they talk a lot about, you know, these curated images, the highlight reels. Yes. And how it's so easy to get sucked into comparing ourselves to these, like, unrealistic versions of other people's lives. Absolutely. I'm totally guilty of this. Me too. You know, like, I see somebody's kitchen. And it's like oh, sparkling white. Spot. There's like a single flower in a vase, like perfectly arranged. Yeah. And I'm looking at my kitchen and it's like, mm -hmm. you know, dishes piled up. <laughs> Real life. And it's just, you know, it's so easy to fall into that trap. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Of feeling inadequate. But the episode does a good job of explaining how this isn't just like a surface level thing. Right. It's actually changing how our brains are wired Obviously. to focus on the negative. Yeah. Which obviously is not great for our self-esteem and our happiness. It's so interesting how it's like our brains are almost hardwired to, you know, seek out those dopamine hits. Yeah. You know, those likes, those little notifications, seeing those perfect pictures. Yeah. And so it makes it really hard to step away even when we know it's probably not good for us. Yeah. It's so interesting how it all ties back to like our brain chemistry. Yeah. It's fascinating. Okay. So that's kind of the comparison trap. And then we move into something that I think it's really important to talk about, mm. which is cyberbullying. Cyberbullying is different. Yeah. It's not like the old school, yeah. you know, playground bullying. It's constant. Yeah, it's everywhere. It's pervasive. Yeah. And that takes a huge toll on mental health. It does. You know what we're talking about. Increased stress and anxiety, yeah. depression, all these things. And it ties back into what we were saying about the comparison. Yeah. You know, if you're already feeling bad about yourself, and then you have all this negativity coming at you online. Yeah. It just makes it so much harder to feel good. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. So that's a heavy one. It is. Let's move into maybe a slightly lighter topic. Okay. But still important. FOMO. Yes. Fear of missing out. I don't know if this happens to you, but sometimes. Oh, all the time. I feel like my phone's vibrating in my pocket. Yes. And I go to check it and there's nothing there. The phantom buzz. It's like a phantom buzz. Yeah. And I think that speaks to how. We are so connected, yeah. like constantly checking, yeah. seeing what other people are up to. It's like we're always afraid of missing something. Right. And the episode really highlights how FOMO can actually trigger anxiety and make us feel inadequate because we're seeing everybody else. Seemingly. Having all this fun. Living their best life. Living their best life. And we're stuck at home, you know, folding laundry. Right. And it makes you want to put off the laundry and go out and do something else. Exactly. Even if you don't really want to do that thing. And they make a good point about how this can lead us to, you know, sacrificing real life interactions. Yes. And self-care. Yeah. To chase online engagement. Right. Which is ultimately kind of a recipe for disaster. Yeah. You end up feeling more disconnected. More disconnected. Yeah. And more down. Yeah. Okay. There was one thing in this episode that I was really curious about. Okay. What's that? They talked about blue light and how it impacts our sleep. Ah, yes. 
I've heard about this. Mm. But I always wondered, like, is it really that big of a deal? It is a big deal. Can you explain that a little bit? Yeah. So basically, the blue light that comes from our devices, like our phones, our laptops, it suppresses melatonin production. And melatonin is the hormone that helps us regulate our sleep-wake cycles. So when we're exposed to blue light at night, it's like we're telling our brains, hey, stay awake, it's daytime. Wow. So even if we're feeling tired, our brains aren't getting the signal to actually fall asleep. That makes sense. And then, of course, on top of the blue light, social media itself is designed to keep us engaged. Yeah. You know, the endless scrolling, the notifications popping up? Yeah. It all plays on our brain's reward system. It's like we're fighting against our own biology. Exactly. So we've talked about a lot of heavy stuff, but I think it's important to remember that we're not powerless. Absolutely not. This episode isn't just about highlighting the problems. It's also about giving us the tools to take control mm -hmm. and create a healthier relationship with social media. That's the key. So what can we actually do? Right. Like actionable steps. Yeah. Well, first off, I think it's important to be more mindful. When you are on social media, right. ask yourself, like, why am I on here right now? What am I hoping to get out of this? Am I actually enjoying myself or am I just kind of mindlessly scrolling? You yeah. know, and yeah. then another thing is curate your feed. What does that mean? Unfollow accounts that make you feel bad. You know, accounts that leave you feeling inadequate or just not good about yourself. And instead, seek out accounts that inspire you, accounts that lift you up, accounts that make you feel happy. So like a social media detox. Exactly. And then it's also really important to set boundaries. OK, how do we do that? Like designate specific times for when you're gonna be on social media. Okay. And then stick to those times. So like maybe an hour in the evening or something like that. Yeah, or maybe like 30 minutes in the morning. And then again, at lunchtime, so, whatever works for you. Yeah. But the key is to be intentional about it. That makes sense. So mindful scrolling, curating our feed, setting boundaries, what else? I think the most important thing is to prioritize real life. Yeah. You know, put down the phone, go outside, Spend time with people you love. Do things that make you feel good. Social media isn't inherently bad. It's not. It's a tool. It can be used for good. It can be used to connect with people, yeah. to learn new things, to build community. Exactly. So it's about finding that balance. Yes. Finding that mindful engagement. So to leave you with something to think about today, what's one small change you can make right now to create a healthier relationship with social media? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for joining us for another deep dive. See you next time. See you next time.